You don't have much choice left, mister. You can throw your gun away and they'll hang you. Or you can keep it and try to use it on me. Either way, you're going to die. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin? Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, boy, bring you brandy. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, set it down. Yes, sir. Well, do you want me to read it to you? Oh, I beg your pardon. I should think so. Reading over a guest's shoulder is hardly the proper behavior for an oriental gentleman. You go? Go where? Well, uh, newspapers say, uh, blood feud rages in New Mexico. 38 men already die. Job for you, Mr. Paladin? Maybe so, hey, boy. We'll see. Violence flared again in Wren Seabree feud when Juan Carlos Morita killed James Seabree in a gunfight. Morita, a notorious killer, had hired his gun to the Wren faction. Mr. Paladin make money. One side hire Morita's gun, other side hire Mr. Paladin's gun. Uh, hey, boy, you sold me. I guess you better send a wire. Yes, sir, Mr. Paladin. Right now. If dandruff dulls your hair, leaves your scalp itchy, please listen. You can get rid of annoying dandruff so fast today, no one should suffer any longer. With Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. Besides that, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And while removing dandruff, Fitch can also brighten hair up to 35%. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too, use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. It was late afternoon when I rode into the New Mexico town, but the summer sun was still merciless, reflecting off the adobe buildings. The dirt street seemed almost deserted. The town was motionless, except for something that swung slowly from a jerry-built scaffold in the middle of the street. It was a hangman's noose, and beneath it lay the body of a dead man. Raise him. I said get him up. I never argue with a shotgun. That's better. This him, Mr. Seabury? Where will I get a look at him? No, he's not Marita. Let him put his hands down. You, John Seabury? That's right. How long has that body been lying there? We hung him this morning. Who is it? Marita's brother. And one Marita is supposed to come for him. Is that it? That's it, mister. Now, who are you? Paladin. You're late. Let's go inside. I don't want the job. You heard of Marita's reputation, mister? It's scary. It doesn't scare me. I just don't want this job. I've paid you $500 in advance. You'll give the money back, mister. Gladly. Here. You 
You're mighty squeamish for a man with a gun for hire. Marita has killed nine human beings. To hunt an animal or kill her, you do whatever you have to. So you leave the brother's body unburied until Marita comes. No thanks, Mr. Seabree. I understand that Marita is a cold-blooded killer. I know he killed your son in a gunfight that was no contest. I came here to take him for you. But I bury the dead, Mr. Seabree. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'd like a room. My horse is outside. All right, I'll take him to the livery. You uh, staying long, mister? Uh, just the night. Can I get a bath? Well, water's real scarce here, mister. You get a pitcher full and you can do anything you want with it. <laughs> it's real warm. I know. Uh, you the uh, gunfighter? I'm the man Seabree brought in. Well... Marita killed nine men, some say more. He needs dying. Who are you? Well, my name's Haskell, John Haskell. You know Marita? He was born here. Beyond that, did you know him? Well, he, he was a friend of mine. Uh, used to be. Now you want him dead? I told you, mister. He needs dying. <laughs> The town was still quiet the next morning as I walked across the street to get my horse. One of Seabree's hands was dozing in a chair near the stable door, a shotgun in his lap. As I came out of the sunlight and walked toward the stall, I had a feeling that someone was behind me in the shadows. And I was right. Mister, is this your fight? No, it isn't my fight. Are you Morita? I am Juan Morita, and I will advise you to stay inside. He moved out of the door like a panther. The man in the chair was dead before he could raise his shotgun. Morita caught Seabree's other man as he came lurching onto the street. And then came Mr. Seabree himself. Only this time it was different. Morita's shot only wounded them. I'll get you next time, Morita. You. There will be no next time for you, John Seabray. Morita. I thought you said this was not your fight. You don't kill a man that way. Stay out of this. You Mr. don't kill him when he's lying on the ground, when he can't reach his gun. I tried to get to him, but I was too late and I was too slow. Before I could draw, Morita swung his gun butt down on my head. Say, right now, you may have something worth $1,000 to you under the hood of your car and may not even know it. Something worth a 1000 silver dollars. A regular filter check is important to today's cars. So important that Fram Corporation is offering $60,000 in cash to get you to check your filters now. Last year, in preparation for Fram's silver anniversary, 10,000 secretly numbered Fram filter cartridges were distributed all over the United States and installed during regular servicing. These filters are worth varying amounts from $1 to $1,000. You may have one in your own car and not even know it. A Fram filter worth 1,000 silver dollars. Check your oil filter and air filter now. If there's a specially numbered Fram filter in your car, you'll win up to 1,000 silver dollars and your dealer will win the same amount. Get in on Fram's big silver treasure hunt. Check your filters now. The trail I followed after Juan Morita was long, hot, and dry. The desert knows how to keep its secrets, and I had been riding for three weeks when I finally came to another small adobe town and went in to see the sheriff. do for you, mister? That depends. I'm looking for Juan Morita. Oh, that's so. You know him? Yes, I know him. I sight. How long you been after him, mister? About three weeks. Do you know where he is? I know where he is. What did he do, mister? Pay you to protect him or are you just afraid? How long has it been since you read a paper, mister? Go on, pick it up. Might learn something. Amnesty. 
What amnesty? Read it for yourself. Three years of violence ended today when a general amnesty was declared in the bloody Wren Seabree feud in New Mexico. Is this true? Yeah, it's true. Go on, read the rest of it. The amnesty was called by Major General Thomas Hardy. The involved principals have laid down their arms and taken oaths to keep the peace. General Hardy said anyone breaking the amnesty would be summarily court-martialed and executed. Among those taking the oath was Juan Carlos Morita. And you don't break the amnesty. It'd start the whole thing up again. Where is he? He's on his way home. To Seabreeze Town? That's right. Now, you better listen, mister. They mean it about this amnesty. You kill him, you hang. It had to stop somewhere. Let it lie. It's done. Not quite. Almost, but not quite. Mister, I know Morita. I respect him. He says he wants to hang up his gun. I believe him. Now, give him his chance. He'll have a chance. The small campfire was nearly out, but there were still embers. The long hunt was coming to an end. One Morita had been there. He couldn't be far away. In fact, at the moment, he was closer than I wanted him to be. Your gun belt. Let it drop. Be quick. Now turn around so I can see your face. Ah, the man who was there with John Seabrick. I was there. That day when you shot a wounded man in cold blood. John Seabrick put a rope around my brother's neck. My brother was 18 years old. He did not even shave yet. And John Seabrick let him lie dead in the street. How many men did your brother kill? Your 18-year-old brother. What do you sell his life for, Marita? I do not want to kill you. How many men, Marita? I do not want to kill again. I do not even know you. I have no hate for you. How, how much are Seabrick's people paying you? How much am I worth? No charge. I want you for myself. But why? I am nothing to you. You should have made the first shot count. If you'd killed Seabree with the first shot, I wouldn't have given you a second thought. You had better stop thinking about me, mister. I am going now. If you follow me, I will kill your horse. Do not make me do that. You'll have to kill me, too. I could do that, mister. Yes, I guess you could. His gun was pointed right at my belly. He could have killed me, but he didn't. He stood there, and he started to tremble. And then... Very slowly, his gun hand dropped to his side. No. No, I will not kill you. I will not kill again. I put my life in your hands. Here, I give you my gun. Mister, I give you $200, all I got. You take me home alive. Don't let anyone lay a gun on me until I get there. A man should die among his people. I will not wear a gun again. Hey! Who's gonna win the thoroughbred Kentucky Clubs? Thoroughbred. Who's gonna win that horse and make it pay? Lots of money will Kentucky Club. Pipe Tobacco has to find a winner. So the horse is here, the time is near. Get your entry blank today. Yes, enter the annual Derby Day contest sponsored by Kentucky Club's nine brands of pipe tobaccos. First prize, a thoroughbred Bay Colt, son of famous oil capital, who won over $580,000. Jockey Ted Atkinson helped select this prize coat. You name him and he's yours. He could win a fortune for you. Get Kentucky Club Derby Day contest entry blanks free at tobacco counters now. Hey, who's going to win the thoroughbred Kentucky Club's thoroughbred? Who's going to win that horse and make it pay? Lots of money, well, Kentucky Club. Pipe Tobacco has to find a winner. So the horse is here, the time is near. Get your entry blank today. It was a long ride home for Morita. We had time to get to know each other in the silences and in the times when we talked. Let's rest the horses a minute. All right. Oh, boy. Paladin? 
Yeah? You think it is possible they will let me come back? You think they can let themselves forget? I don't know, Morita. Some won't. Some may try, I don't know, but... If it were me, I'd ride west. I wouldn't try to go back. No. No, my people say a man is like a tree. You tear out his roots, he dies. No man wants to die. I have killed 12 men, Paladin. I remember the faces of each of them. I do not forget. You think I have a right to live? You have a right to try. A man speaks of death, but he is not sincere. I want to live. I want to get married. You think I'm crazy? No, Maria. A little optimistic, maybe, but not crazy. Maria, she's a woman with a tender spirit. I would give my eyes to know that I could grow old together with her. You will see her, Paladin. You will tell me if she's not a woman to behold. I'm sure she is. I will not live a week. I will not wear a gun and I will not live a week. I was an altar boy. And now I have killed 12 men. I cannot forget. And if I cannot, Paladin, can the others? Then why go back? To try? Let's go. Morita was making a good try, and it wasn't easy. There was sullenness and suspicion through the town the day we got back. The hangman's rig still stood in the middle of the street, and there was talk that it was waiting for Morita. But he kept his word. He didn't put on a gun. And on the night of the fiesta, it looked like he might make it. You see, Paladin? You see, my Maria? I told you she is a woman to behold. You were right, Juan. She's lovely. The senor is very kind. And we will marry and we will have children and we will live together until we are old. Is that not so, Maria? Oh, Juan. It I... is so. <laughs> I drink too much, I talk too much. This is for you, Paladin. You dance with my Maria. I will be back in a little bit. It will be my pleasure. Maria? Would you forgive me, Mr. Paladin, if I asked you to come aside with me for a moment? I would like a chance to talk with you. Always at the service of a pretty woman, Maria. Gracias. That Juan, tonight he is drunk. Tonight he remembers how much we used to love each other. Do you think he will remember tomorrow when he's tired or angry or feels he must kill someone? I don't speak for him, Maria. Do you love him? A man like that... If you're a woman, he can stir you. I do not know if I love him anymore, Mr. Paladin. But I do not want to marry him. And tell him so. He has killed 12 men, senor. Do you know how simple it would be for him to kill another? Who? Another. No. No more, Maria. The killing is finished. I believe him. I'm going to marry someone else, Mr. Paladin. He is not a gunfighter. I'm afraid for him. Tell one. He won't strap on a gun. He won't kill this man. And if he tries? If he tries, I won't let him. What is this you will not let someone do, Paladin? I won't let you put on a gun, Morita. I get my word. Why should I break it? I don't think you will. But, Mari, she thinks I will. Is that it? Why, Mari? Why? One. It is said, Paladin, that only a fool stands between lovers. Why, Maria? I cannot marry you, Juan. But I love you. It is too late. Too much has changed. You have changed. Another. There is another. While I was away. Who is he, Maria? I love him, Juan. I believe you. Tell me his name. Do not kill his him. His name. You know my name, Juan. I know your name, John Haskell. I called you friend. Do you have a gun, friend? I own one. In the street. Tonight. Morita. Do not make me come after you, Haskell. Die big, friend. Maybe she will cry for you. Morita, you gave me your word. Maria, she gave me her word too, Mr. Paladin. And so it was not over, after all. There was to be another shooting, in another dusty street, and it could only come out one way. Man doesn't learn much about gunfighting working behind a hotel desk. 
but Haskell wouldn't hide. He came outside the hotel, wearing his gun belt awkwardly. Morita's shot caught him in the shoulder. And then it was up to me. After all, I had also given my word. Follow him. Do not stand in front of him. You're not going to shoot him again, Morita. Do not make me kill you. You're not good enough to fight me. We'll see. I said it. It seems a long time ago. I do not wish to kill you. You have a choice, Morita. You can throw away a gun, and they'll hang you for breaking the amnesty. Or you can fight me. I will not hang. He lay there in the street, in the shadow of the hangman's rig. Juan Morita had tried, but he couldn't live without his gun. At least he didn't hang. Your drink, Mr. Paladin? Mm. Hey, boy, bring a brandy. Mm. Oh. Oh, thanks. Uh, you set it down. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Paladin? Mm. You want hey, boy, to read paper with you? Find job for you like the last time? No, hey, boy. Not like last time. Oh, by uh, Mr. Paladin, big hero. Stop feud, kill big killer. No. You're not a hero if you kill a man who wanted you to do it. What Mr. So Paladin mean? Never mind. Just get me another drink. Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Julian Fink and adapted for radio by Marion Clark. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Lillian Bayef, Clark Gordon, Lawrence Dobkin, and Barney Phillips. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>